certificate of death, County of Aristook, State of Maine. Date of death, January 2nd, 2011. Full name of deceased, Eric L. Williams. Gender, male. Ethnicity, African American. Marital status, married, age, 27. Place of death, St. Agatha. Birthplace, Augusta. Occupation, farmer. Name of spouse, Linda J. Williams. Cause of death, hemorrhaging. Eric Williams, a young man found in a pool of blood in the forested area surrounding St. Agatha. Was it murder? Was it an accident? The marks on his chest didn't match that of any known animal, but more of a rake, as if somebody jabbed him and scratched him with it until he fainted. Certificate of Death, County of Aristook, State of Maine. Date of death, January 9th, 2011. Full name of deceased, Florence N. Carter. Gender, male. Ethnicity, French-Canadian. Marital status, single. Age, 34. Place of death, Madawaska. Birthplace, Madawaska. Occupation, unemployed. Name of spouse, not available. Cause of death, stabbing. Homicide. Uh, could this be connected to the death of Eric Williams? Several stab wounds in the chest and a few in the legs. This could be exciting. We don't get much action around here in northern Maine. It's mainly quiet and peaceful. I don't want to sound happy about people dying. I'm just glad I've reached an exciting page in the novel of my career. Being a police officer in this rural area is like being an IT tech guy in Somalia. Very few people need your services, and when they do, somebody else gets the client before you. Oh, Officer Jacobs, you just missed a police raid. The guys had bags and bags of weed. I ain't missing no raid this time. Certificate of Death, County of Aristook, State of Maine. Date of Death, January 17th, 2011. Full name of deceased, Eddie... Uh, we don't have a last name... Gender, male, ethnicity, French-Canadian. Marital status, not available. Age, not available. Place of death, Eagle Lake. Birthplace, not available. Occupation, not available. Name of spouse, not available. Cause of death, disembowelment. Horrific context. Somebody had called, claiming to see a body dangling from a tree. We arrived at the scene couldn't barely make out the object. After shouting and then throwing rocks at it, we shot the object. A man fell from the tree. All of the organs were missing, all of the fingers and toes removed. The man was wearing a blue jumpsuit with a hello sticker saying, Eddie. We couldn't identify the deceased besides that small piece of information. I'm crossing my finger there's a serial killer on the loose as I can't wait to throw their ass in prison. Certificate of Death, County of Aristook, State of Maine. Date of death, January 25th, 2011. Full name of deceased, Vincent K. Martell. Gender, male. Ethnicity, American. Marital status, married. Age, 34. Place of death. Sear Plantation. Birthplace, Biddeford. Occupation, Fisherman. Name of spouse, Adrian J. Meadows. Cause of death, mutilation. Supposedly on vacation in the north, a citizen of Biddeford. We found him in a small cabin on top of a bed with his limbs rearranged to assemble a crab. His head was turned backwards and the eyeballs were spooned out. He was on all fours, and his body had been fixed to face the door. A rather peculiar effect, as soon as we walked in the cabin and saw Vincent, I had received a text message. Do you believe in ghosts? I couldn't track the number, and despite little evidence, I have a gut feeling there's a single person doing this. Certificate of Death, County of Aristook, State of Maine. Date of death, January 30th, 2011. Full name of deceased, not available. Gender, female. Ethnicity, 
not available. Marital status, not available. Age, not available. Place of death, Portage Lake. Birthplace, not available. Occupation, not available. Name of spouse, not available. Cause of death, not available. I don't understand this one. These murders keep getting more and more dreamlike. This morning, when I was patrolling, I noticed a hand sticking out of the ground. After digging it up, we discovered the body of a skinned, mutilated woman. This prevented us from knowing who it was, what color they were, how old they were, etc. This is absolutely nightmarish. I entered this investigation all enthusiastic, and now I'm on the verge of a mental breakdown. Th these descriptions and images placed in my world has turned my life into a twisted reality. I, I can't make out what is happening. I can't make out the text message I received. Pardon my French, but what the fuck? Certificate of, of death. Uh, County of Arista, state of Maine. Uh, date of death, February 6th, 2011. Full name of deceased, Raymond E. McWilliams. Uh, gender, male. Uh, ethnicity, French Canadian. Marital status. Uh, um, Mar marital status, uh, married, uh, age, 41, place of death, uh, Wallagrass, birthplace, Allagash, uh, occupation, uh, uh, occupation, uh, mechanic, name of spouse, Virginia K. McWilliams, cause of death, N not available. decipher the nightmares I experience every every night uh, they're so surreal they don't contain any pictures that my mind can comprehend I wake up sweating we found this man sitting at my desk when I opened the door he, he was just sitting there smiling staring at me. His body was perfectly intact. He was... He was just... dead. The horrendous crimes aren't fathomable anymore. These people are just going to have to die. I can't take the feeling of guilt. Why? Why am I guilty? Certificate of Death, County of Aroostook, State of Maine, Date of Death, February 7th, 2011, Full Name of Deceased, Craig K. Jacobs, Male or Female, Male, Ethnicity, French-Canadian, Marital Status, Single, Age 32, Place of death, Oxbow. Birthplace, Portland. Occupation, police officer. Name of husband or wife, not available. Disease or cause of death, not available. Officer Jacobs was discovered in the corner of the cabin this morning. He had apparently set up a video camera to record himself. And we checked the tape. The first few hours were just of him sitting motionless, staring into space with lack of emotion, blinking once every 30 seconds. Eventually he fell asleep, and then we could hear the faint sound of a door opening, followed by the camera being toppled over. Then there was almost complete silence. We couldn't hear anything but a whisper describing unintelligible nonsense the room got darker and darker.